Sup, motherfuckers? So here's like what the project looks like first off. There's just no objects. There's a clear little floor and there's that thing above. I just like made a simple little map in, Kado in Trench Broom and I just imported it in. And uh, yeah, let's just say you want to bring over an object from Kado and just like make it like you would a Blender object. But instead of making a Blender object, you make a Trench Broom object or like a map and yeah. So what's nice about this is it's really easy to get like multiple textures layered on and they're like I feel like Kado is a lot better at making like um like uh good geometric objects while Blender is a lot better at making organic ones. So uh, right now I'm just making a few little like uh objects in here that I'm just going to use in the game. So now we got our simple object. I'm going to uh export this as an OBJ and we're gonna um, put it into this project. Usually you might want to put it into a different folder but since it's just a small project I'm just gonna put it into the same folder. Now we're gonna import it into Blender. Alright so then you import the OBJ you just uh, go into your object, click on the object and then now everything is selected. If it wasn't selected you want to select everything at this point, everything that you import in. Uh, but since it's selected all I have to do is just control click the first one then press control J to join everything together. So right here I think you could also just do it from by right clicking and pressing join and now do the same thing. But you have to make sure you at least have one like highlighted in yellow or else it won't count. You want to have one highlighted like that then you want to join them together and boom they're all joined in. And then after that you probably want to tell it where the textures are in here if you want to see it in Blender or if you want to do anything with it. So what you could do is you could just like make a new image thing and then find it in there and then we could pick that one which is red oh we can't see the textures yet but yeah you can see it right now right there now we got all the textures loaded onto the object and we have it joined together and all we need to do now is just probably make it a sixteenth of the size so that way it's better it's more like similar to our map coordinates if we want to export as an obj you could export as whatever you want but I like to export as an obj in this case Go to our object. This is our test object. Let's just make it separate from Blender. Let's make a new scene. I'll just make it a rigid body, just so it has some physics to it. And then I'll make a mesh instance. And then just load it in like this. And let's just go to our object, test object from Blender. And boom, we have that. Okay, so now, as you can see, it's not textured. And we have these surface textures right here that already have materials in them. But these materials are all empty. And the problem with this is that, look, I, I could set one of the textures right now. I'm not going to set all of them because it takes a while. But you could set the albedo, load it, load uh, load in the Kado thing, go to textures, go to base. And I'll just like put in the red one since that's what it is. Okay, so uh, right here, you can see it in the editor. It looks all fine, but the textures do not show up in the game as I'm going to show after I set the object. After you have your collision shape, however you made it, you're going to want to resize the mesh instance and the collision shape, but not the rigid body. Okay, right, so you're going to want to uh, transform both of these to 0 0.0625. Add to our level. And no, now it's already moving, but as you can see, the texture is not there. It does not load textures in. You can see it in the editor when you put it on surfaces, but it does not actually load it in. I don't know why this happens, but it does. So this is where a little script comes into play. So what I like to do is uh, basically while you're testing it before you start making a plugin or something, um, is to actually just uh, go through all the surfaces and then transfer them over to the materials. And that's what I want to do right now. So what's nice about when you import it from um, Trench Broom is you have all these services right here, surface 1 through 4, and then it's, uh, material 0 through 3, which is basically 4 materials, and you're just going to copy them right motherfucking over. And uh, yeah, so uh, what's like basically what you could do is like uh, you could act, it, all the like things actually have a path to the texture, and there's a way you could load them in that will make it very nice. So I'm just going to add a little uh, temporary script in a way. And what you're going to want to do is probably make it a tool afterwards. But while you're editing the script, just uh, put everything you want to do in the ready function just so it runs once. 
And what we are going to do is I'm going to make a couple functions. One that's uh, set material. And basically, uh, it's just going to go through all the surfaces and get from the mesh and copy it over to our um, mesh instance. And that's it's just going to take a mesh instance and it's going to do what I basically just said. Okay, next we're going to take a set surface. Basically, this will only like just be one surface. So we're going to pass in a mesh instance and then mesh instance. And then we're also going to have a I of type int. This will be our like index. So first off, you're going to check if um, you're going to check the mesh instance count dot uh, mesh dot get surface count. And this is where it gets really motherfucking confusing because there is also your mesh instance, not your mesh, because this is your mesh instance right here. And like that's what we're getting. We're calling the mesh and we're getting the surface count of that mesh. And right here, this is the mesh instance, and we're going to get the surface, get surface material count. And that's motherfucking confusing as motherfucking shit. But this is basically what you're going to do. You're going to check if the sizes are equal. If they're not equal, there's two things you could do. You could do a uh, print error, and just to say uh, counts between mesh and mesh instance are not equal. Something like that, just to tell you that like something went wrong in the process. Because you want to make sure that they both have an equal amount of uh, surface counts, just to make sure you're messing with like something that was imported from Godot or something that's textured beforehand. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to uh, iterate through the surface counts. So we're going to do uh, mesh dot get surface count, and uh, we're going to go through one at a time. And then uh, right here, we can just call the set surface material function, pass in the mesh instance. It'll just be a reference at this point, and then just pass an I. And then uh, what's nice about this is that, let's say if you still want to go down here and try to uh, copy over as many materials as possible, you could do this range zero, and then pass in the minimum between both of these. So you uh, do the minimum uh, mesh surface count between these two so that way it only ever iterates to the smallest let's see right there and we forgot the colon okay and then after that you could just set the set surface material thing like that and you can just call it twice instead of having to copy over this code that I'm about right all right so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, get a variable called material and then it will be of type material and I'm going to set it to the mesh instance and then get the dot mesh dot. Okay, it should be surface dot get material right there. And it'll be I. And that'll be our material. So I'm going to check if the material um, is a shader material. Because if it's a shader material, we have to treat it differently. For now, I'll just put a pass though. And I'll just put elif material is spatial material. So these are like the two main different types of materials that there's going to be. All right, so in here you would do it differently. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another variable called shad mat, basically shader material, and then make it of type um, shader material. And this way we could actually uh, see that we have to use a function called set shader param, get the texture albedo, because that's what we're going to do. So we're going to set the shader param that's texture albedo, and this is how we're going to pass in the texture to that. So instead of loading the texture into the set shader param, we're going to make a variable called texture, and then load the whole path to the texture that we want into uh, that variable, and then pass it into both either the shader material or the spatial material. All right, first off, we're going to uh, copy the path to the textures folder, and paste it into the load. And then after that, we're going to concatenate the string with the resource name. So as you notice with the mesh instances, we have all these uh, names right here, base and floor stone red, for instance, like that one. All of them have names to them. And that's what we're going to want to grab. So we're going to the script again, and we're going to concatenate the first string with the materials name, resource name. And that'll give us the, uh, the image file and then just add a PNG afterwards. And then that'll give us the whole path to the um, to the texture. And then we're just going to pass that texture into the set shader param function. 
And that's how we're going to set the uh, texture if it's a shader material. And right here we go to set surface material and then pass in that new material that we made called shad mat. And right here we're going to do the spatial material. So I'll call it spat mat just because it sounds funny. And let's do spatial and then uh, pass in the material just like we did with the shader. But here it's a lot easier. We just do spat mat dot albedo texture is equal to texture and then right here we'll just do the mesh instance and then set that that set surface material i and then spat mat and that way we only set the material if these two things are valid let's make this a tool and basically what you could do is uh, what happens is once you make this a tool right here you won't see anything done but once i exit out and open it back up then it will texture everything. As you see, everything's all nice and textured. We can open it up. You'll actually see the textures in the game. So boom. It's more fucking cool. So you can just take something from Godot and make it into a 3D object within Godot if you don't want to use something like Blender or something for some reason. Well, I hope this mo fucking helped, and I hope you all have a good rest of your mo fucking day. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah.